Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hairbrain Games, The Week in Games. Let's just cut to it. It's the nice fall weather we're having up here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, two days ago, we had two inches of rain and a huge downpour while someone was rebuilding our deck, uh, or our porch, and uh, down today, it's 75 and sunny. And it's expected to be that way all week long. It's a good time for basketball, except when you get hit with a basketball. Anyway, uh, it's October, but sadly there are no pumpkin farms. There's no corn mazes this year. We're kind of bummed about that, but we have our gaming. So, let's get to the news. Okay. In news, the big news is that Hero Quest, the uh, infamous, famous game from long ago, 30 years ago, is making a comeback. It is now returning in its form in a Kickstarter, and uh, it's better than... No, it's about the same as. It's it's pretty much the same kind of game, if you're liking that. I like the nostalgia for it, for the win, for nostalgia. Not sure I personally will back it, but if you're interested in getting on board the, the hero, uh, hero quest and nostalgia train, choo-choo. Uh, Stefan Feld... I haven't heard a lot from him for a long, long time. There have been games that have come out, but uh, but uh, he's coming out with a new one that's curiously called Bonfire. This is a game with gnomes and forests and bonfire lighting. Uh, yeah, Stefan's, Stefan's a little weird. It's kind of got a, like a Luna vibe. I could be wrong, but it feels sort of like one of his Luna games, uh, but that might be pure Luna C. Um, you know, I'm still looking for a... Stefan Feld game with with a feeling I've never felt before, uh, but because a lot of his games tend to be thematically interesting, but they kind of follow the same kind of of a uh, kind of pattern, which I you know I've always liked. They're, there's nothing wrong with them; they're actually compelling. But after a while, I sort of stopped just insta buying them. Uh, I might pick this one up though. This one's an interesting choice. Maybe others will 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 uh, join suit. Now, for those of you who are feeling like we just haven't yet tapped into the sodium-based gaming market, look no further than the new Yahtzee Cup of Noodles edition. Yes, who needs pips when you can have a sloshy cup of noodle ingredients to, to roll your dice and make uh, slithery good fun? So, Although I'm almost convinced that this was just the recipe generator that they used to make cup of noodles in the first place, and they're just revealing it now. But for those of you interested in the quirky and the bizarre, Yahtzee cup of noodles probably didn't see that coming. So with that, let's get to my question of the week. All right, question of the week. What's next? I am finishing up... Today, in a few short moments, the last of my long-running edition of Alphabet Soup. Uh, it it was a very fun ride. It is a fun ride, and I can't believe that uh, I combined some of the letters together for the top let games that begin with the letter. But uh, but I'm amazed that I went about 25 25 such. That means I started and finished something, which is momentous for me. But what's next? I'm trying to think of clever things that are interesting, that aren't rote, that aren't things that have been done before ad nauseum, that aren't just doing it to do it, just to be academically coming up with something. I'm looking for something clever that, A, brings some sort of value for people who don't play games much or who play games casually or even who play games extensively that might find it entertaining and, and perhaps even helpful without being uh, contrived. Uh, I, you know, I won't even, you know, if I don't f come up with something, great, then my week in games just got four minutes shorter. But if you guys have any ideas, I have some kind of clever ideas, but I definitely do not corner the clever market. So let me know, what do you think would be a good replacement for Alphabet Soup? Uh, yeah, that's, that's my gaming question for the week, mostly directed at you to direct back at me. So let's get to my three games. I am excited for this game. Fallout uh, Atomic Bonds. This is the cooperative upgrade pack, which I, I played a lot of Fallout. I like Fallout. There are things I think that could be better about Fallout that I wish that they could have tapped much more Boris... Boris... Boris much better, uh, but this is an interesting like content value add that sort of takes the original scenarios and makes them cooperative. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. I'm interested. Count me in. I never did a review on it. I really should. Uh, maybe that's one of the things. Maybe I need to do a retro retro review thing. That's one of the advantages of not caring about clicks and, uh, 
and pass-throughs and likes and all that stuff. Apparently, if you're trying to do this for money, you, you don't go to old games because you need to have lots of click rates or else you get deprioritized. I love not caring about that stuff because I can go pick whatever game I want. And believe me, there's an army out there. Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc Aftermath. I haven't played the original game of this for about four years, so when this came on sale on Amazon, it was absolutely positively just a sign that I needed to buy this. Yeah, but exciting. Godzilla. Godzilla Tokyo Clash. This is a... Uh, I'm looking to see how well this, how, how this compares to King of Tokyo, because King of Tokyo is a great pull them out and play it with anybody game. This has got some more subtlety. Kind of reminds me of Terror from Meeple City meets King of Tokyo. Uh, we're going to find out. The box... It's gotten good reviews, and I wouldn't have bought it just by looking at it. It's a little neon for me, or a little different. I just, it's busy, busy, not neon. Uh, but I'm going to give it a try, and I will let you know what I think on that one, I am sure. All right, let's get to the final edition of Alphabet Soup. All right, we are at X, Y, and Z, and because there's not a lot of games I own with those first letters, I had to combine them, and that's okay. It was time. I didn't want to have a just arbitrarily extend it for two more weeks to do Y and Z when I just it just it would have been a useless gift. So anyway, let's get on to it. Top of the line in X, Y, Z has got to be Zia Legends of a Drift System. This is a great sandbox space game that's made that has an essential expansion that I would never play without. Uh, if you have that going for you, you have an interesting one-player game, two, three, four. It takes some time. It's a longer game, and you don't always get the turns, and there is some chaos with rolling the dice as far as how far you can go. So it's not it's not this. Yeah, it's not perfection in a box. It's a blast in a box. Uh, bottom of the barrel has to be Yardmaster Express. I bought this and despised it from the very minute I opened it. I don't know why. It's clever. It takes cards and you use it for multiple purposes and you're loading train cars and all that. Uh, it was expressly disappointing to me. Came out of nowhere. Has to be Zambezi, the expedition game. Uh, after I did my review of Jungle Cruise, which wasn't entirely glowing, uh, I went back and compared them with Zambezi and was just amazed at, at what a clever game. Again, not perfect, uh, a little bit too long in the britches for, for, for what it gave, but still much more fun than some of the, the recent uh, jungle racing games out there. Uh, Riches to Rag, Zularetto. Zularetto was a game done by uh, Michael Schott? Anyway, it was a game about building your zoo. Um, I played it a few times and was originally impressed, but then as time goes on and I played other games, I realized this was too abstract and just not that interesting. And I don't think I bought a game of his since. Uh, it just wasn't for me. It was just a little bit too simple. I didn't feel the connection between the zoo and me. Uh, yeah. So, Rags to Riches, on the other hand, was a game that came out of nowhere called Yetisburg Titanic Battles in History. Imagine playing great battles in history as, yes, a Yeti. Now, this series did not go on and extend itself nearly as much as I'd hoped because I thought that would be, it was so clever to be able to try to do battles in history, but I guess it just didn't quite sell over the top. But uh, it definitely was one I went back to and went like, yeah, I still like this one. So, Meaty Miny Man, which Xbox... Xbox, Xbox the Calm game, XCOM the board game, is a game that is, it's not incredibly difficult to be honest, it just happens to be the most complicated of the ones uh, in X, Y, and Z land. It is the quintessential top real-time game for me, and there have been a lot of real-time games that have come out since, but this one still does an exceptional job of just tension, and uh, it gives you everything but, this, but the tactical battles of XCOM. Uh, like it. Test of Time, Zombie Dice. Oh my lord, for such a simple game, Zombie Dice goes anywhere, plays anywhere, people get it, and I even enjoy it afterwards. I usually have, usually simple games I play a few times and then go on to something. This one, you could just play this one. The push your luck element is just, it's just the, it's the sweet spot. So, played that a lot, a lot. Comeback Tour, I would love to see Xeno Shift, that series, come back in. It has some clever clever ways that you are building, you're, you're fighting against these incoming aliens. Um, think, uh, 
Death Angel, Space Hulk, Death Angel kind of thing, except done in, in a, with a little more, it's done in a more modern way. Imagine that. I would like to see it sort of tightened up into sort of a campaign kind of style. I know people are tired of campaigns, but I think that if you could do a more of an XCOM feel of equipping your soldiers and going out and being able to like face on tactical things you're aware of, I, th I think that they, I think that they could jump over that that gap to making a great Xeno Shift game. Um, at some point. Honorable mentions, Theme, XCOM, the board game, like the app, it was one of the first games that drove with an app, and it's, that, that app still works great, and it's the mood music, the setting, the timing, the, the franticness is just perfect. Artwork, I'll still have to go, I, I almost would have gone Zia, except I don't think it's that incredibly good. Uh, it's, it's, it's decent, it's not, whoa, uh, eye-popping, but XCOM, the board game, I, I think will probably take that. And Cleverness, Yokohama, I didn't mention that one because it didn't quite fit in any category grade, but Yokohama is clever, it looks very busy, it probably could have been a Meaty Mighty Manowich uh, entry right next to XCOM, but it really, once you start to see the flow, it's really not that complicated, but I'd go with that. So that's it, that's the end of Alphabet Soup, and I thank all of you who, uh, and let me know if some of you actually watched all 24, 24? Um, meeting uh, like installments and, and, and whatever so I appreciate all you guys it's been great to get your feedback there have been a lot more comments lately coming in and it's been great to be able to, to get to those and kind of answer people I really enjoyed learning about you guys and what your guys' opinions are so it's been a fantastic and fun year uh, for, for Hairbrain Games thanks to all of you guys so take care and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games <laughs>